In this video, I'll be going over the implementation of things like enemies and non-tile objects. First thing you need to know is that this video is dependent on both my video on my custom framework and my videos on physics, more specifically tile physics. Enemies and objects in uh, game development are really just lists of objects in the terminology of programming. So you just have to make a list of a bunch of things that contain the information for the object or enemy and then render those and uh, apply the appropriate actions for them every frame. Usually those objects have things like coordinates and collision testing for various purposes. Uh, those are ba the basic things that are in most objects and uh, enemies. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to make an object that makes you jump when you hit it. So up here I've added the jumper image which is this arrow so it's going to be that once you touch this arrow you'll jump up so that's the idea i'm going to create a class for the jumper thing we call it a jumper object and then i'm going to define the initialization stuff and it's going to need a location so that'll be the location the location will be a list uh, or a tuple with an x and y value. And that's actually probably all it's going to need. So self.location. Um, if you're unfamiliar with classes in Python, I suggest you look that up or else this video is going to be confusing. So now I'm going to make a render function. So self and it doesn't need the location because it has one. I can do it does need a surface to render on though and because this is a side scrolling platformer i'm going to add a scroll variable well, parameter too so on the surface that it was given as a parameter it'll put the jumper image which is this thing at self.loc0 which is the x location of it minus the scroll so this is applying the uh, basically the location of the camera in the game. And then you do the same thing for the y-axis. So that type of object's like super simple. Uh, one thing that's left is to make the player jump when it hits it. And for this, I'm just going to create a function that returns the uh, rect for it. So if you're unfamiliar with that, in Pygame, uh, recs are just rectangle objects and uh, you can do collision testing with them. So that's the x position, the y position, and then for the width and height, I'm gonna need to get it from here. It's eight by nine. So eight by nine, um, and then you can fetch that rect um, and check for collisions. So I can do uh, collision test. So this checks if it collides with the pi game rect in the parameter. So all you gotta do is create a rect for the jumper by using the self.get rect, which we just made, and then do return jumper rect dot collide rect rect. So this will return true or false depending on whether or not these two rects have collided. Uh, the dot collide rect is one of the prop well, one of the functions associated with the Pygame rect class. So just using this collision test, we can check if uh, something has collided with the jumper object. So like I said, uh, objects in game development are just lists of objects in the term, in programming terms. So now I just got to create a list and fill it with that thing. So jumper objects equals that. And then let's just kind of place these a little bit randomly. For I in range five. Jumper objects append and then the jumper object class with the uh, parameters of the location, which is going to be a random dot random 0 to 600 minus 300. So just a random position on the x axis pretty much within 300 uh, pixels of 0. And then the vertical position will, will just be 80. 
So now we've got our list of jumper objects, but we need to render them. So down here is where the player is rendered. So I'm going to add that in here. So for jumper in jumper objects, jumper.render, display, scroll. And now we also have to implement the part that makes you jump when you hit it. And this is going to be a, big, a bigger jump than I've got for pressing the up key right now. So if player object rect, so this is the Pygame rect associated with the player. I did another video on how this player is set up. Player object rect. Uh, wait, actually, if jumper collide test or is it collision test? Collision test. So if it's collided with the player then vertical momentum equals negative seven. This vertical momentum variable is the vertical momentum of the player. It's actually to eight. Okay, so I made a mistake in here. Oh, it's, <laughs> I wrote jumper. And it's jumper object. And I made a mistake up here. There needs to be a self in here. So I can see one up here. And you can see if I hit it, it makes me bounce. And if I wanted to do something like make these move, I could. All I gotta do is jumper dot loc zero minus equals zero point two, and all of the jumpers will move left a little bit. Oops. Oh, it's a tuple. So uh, jumper dot loc equals jumper dot loc zero minus that, and jumper dot loc one. So look, uh, these jumpers are now moving. It's kind of like um, an enemy or something, if going up are bad. So the other example I wanted to provide in this video was a simple enemy kind of using uh, the framework I've got. So I've already uh, set aside uh, a enemy image, basically it's just a circle, black circle. And I'm going to make a list of enemies, enemies equals that, and then for i in range five enemies dot append e dot entity so the entity from my framework and I'm gonna do random dot random zero to six hundred minus three hundred that's the same as the jumper x locations and then for this one I'm gonna put them at about eighty I think that's the same as before and these things are 13 by 13 pixels. The uh, ID for it is just enemy. I've added the animation, with, it's not an animation really, it's just one image, but I've added the information for the framework to use for the enemy to find its images. So it's under enemy, idle, idle zero. So that's the enemy, it's just a circle. So now we actually have to make our enemies do this stuff. So for enemy in enemies, the enemies need to be able to fall down. So actually, I'm going to add a vertical velocity in here. So zero and that. So the the enemies in the enemies list are lists with the first value being the vertical velocity and the second value being the uh, entity object from my framework. Enemy zero plus equals zero point, uh, what is it, two. That's how strong gravity is in this game at the moment. So you're adding to the vertical velocity to basically apply gravity. So since they're spawning in the air, they're gonna have to fall down. And I'm also gonna make these things follow the player. So enemy movement equals zero zero so that's what it's going to move for the frame so the second value is going to be the enemy's velocity it will vertical velocity so that's enemy zero and then enemy movement zero will be set depending on uh, where the player is so if layer dot x is more than enemy one dot x then enemy movement zero equals let's do one I'm gonna move pretty slow. If player dot x is less than enemy one dot x, enemy movement zero equals negative one. So one thing I'm gonna add in here is that uh, this needs to be more than that plus let's say five, and less than that say minus five. 
Um, that way it'll stop shortly before being exactly on top of the player. So it'll, when it's going um, left, or wait, I got this backwards. Actually, it's minus five, then plus five. So when it's going right, it'll stop shortly before reaching the player's exact location. When it's going left, it'll stop shortly before reaching the player's exact location. That way it doesn't go back and forth once it's on top of it. I recommend doing this when you're making AI that just follows things. You don't want them to be exactly on top. That just kind of gets annoying. So now we've got to apply the movement to the enemy. So enemy one dot move and enemy movement. So that's the movement for that frame. And then tile rects. This is the tile information for the game so that it can handle collisions. And then you also need to save the collision types. So you can do, oops, that's needed so you can do the if collision types bottom is true, enemy zero equals zero. That way you stop the vertical velocity once it's hit the ground. I'm also gonna cap this. If enemy zero is more than three, enemy zero equals three. That means it can't fall faster than three pixels per second. So now we also have to render it. So enemy one dot render display, that's the surface we're rendering on, and scroll, that's the basic camera, uh, basically the camera position. And we also need to make it so that when the player hits it, the player gets bumped. If player dot object dot rect dot collide rect with enemy one dot object dot rect that's checking if the player has collided with the enemy, uh, and this is Pygames built-in function for the rects. If the player has collided with the enemy, then vertical momentum equals negative uh, four. So it's just gonna be a small bounce. Okay, time to see if this works. Oops, that's missing a colon. So tile rect, that needs to be tile rect. And entity has no, okay. oh, it's display, not render for my uh, framework. Okay, so here are the enemies. They're following me around. If I go over this way, they'll come follow me so I can hit them and it'll bounce me up. And they've actually just stacked on top of each other. So there's like five enemies on the same location right there. And then these are the things that I added earlier. Where'd they go? Oh, this is one other thing you have to keep in mind. So what happened there was the game stopped handling the tiles below me because I went up too high. So all the enemies fell down because it wasn't handling those tiles. To the game, it only handles what's near the player. So if you don't see it on the screen, it's not going to be processed. And if the play oh, enemies continue to be processed while off screen, they'll just fall through because the game doesn't treat the tiles like they're there. That's to save on processing. So if you're doing something like that where you're not handling stuff off screen, you're also gonna need to apply that to the enemies. So the easiest way to do this is to just check if they're on the screen, which you can get from the scroll location in my case, and then the dimensions of the display. So display r equals pygame direct. So the window size is 600 by 400, but the surface size is 300 by 200. So uh, scroll zero, scroll one. Those are the X and Y locations to the top left corner of my display in the game's world. And then the, the dimensions are 300 by 200 pixels. So that's the rect that basically checks what's being shown. Well, it covers what's being shown. So I can just check the, if the players collide with that. And if they do, you they get handled. So if display are to collide rect enemy one to object to rect. So that's if the player's colliding with the display, then we do all the processing. Uh, well, if the enemy collides with the display, then we do all the processing for the enemy. Okay, so here are the enemies again. They're just kind of chasing me, and I can go up here, and they're still here when I get back down because it stops processing them when they're off the screen. So actually, if I sit here, they won't come because they're not on the screen and they're not being processed. I have to go over here and then here they are. And then here's the rest. So that's pretty much it for this video. A couple things. Uh, first of all, the implementation of enemies was a bit more abstract because they used the framework. Um, 
I'll have the links to the physics and framework videos in the description if you want to take a look at those. These types of concepts can be used for a lot of things, like if you want coins in your game, you can do similar, something similar to these jumpers, but instead of doing vertical momentum equals negative 8, you could do player money plus equals 1, so that you add 1 to the player's money when they collide with the coin. You could also do something like subtracting from the player's health when they hit spikes, uh, there's all sorts of stuff you could do with this type of stuff. Using uh, collections of objects and enemies and stuff is pretty important for game development. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, you can head over to my Discord. There's a link to that in the description. I've got a channel dedicated to questions in there, and that's probably where I'll see questions the fastest. I do answer the comment questions on this video, but I'll get to those stuff in my Discord server the fastest. Also, if you're interested in the projects I work on, you can check out my Twitter, although at the moment I'm not really working on much because I've been very busy. And I'll see you guys in the next video.